Can we talk it's about moving mine. on when it comes to the Laker roster? Some moves that need to be made, right? That should be made and addressed. Magic Johnson suggested one. He said in an interview with AM570 in Los Angeles of Dennis Schroeder, I don't think he's a Laker. That's just my opinion. I don't know if they're going to sign him back or not. I don't think he brings the winning mentality and attitude that we need. He had a chance to show that in this series, and to me, he failed in this series. Failed was the word he used. In six games, Dennis Schroeder averaged 14 points a game, just slightly under his season average. Uh, he shot 30% from three. That's a problem. 40% from the field, another problem. Uh, 2.8 assists per game as well. Is he key, the problem with the Lakers? I don't know that he's the sole problem with the Lakers, but clearly when Magic speaks, I'm going to listen because it's just not coming from out of nowhere. It's coming from somewhere. When you're that dialed into an organization. Still? Absolutely yeah. still. Yeah. What do you mean? Oh. Just because – the way he... Well, he had that awkward exit from the I was going to say, the way franchise. he exited does, didn't mean anything. That was more of a Rob Palinka kind of, I'm just... That was how he dealt with it. Okay. But he's so dialed in, I'm listening. I'm listening. Whether it's coming from Rich Paul... LeBron Incorporated. Yeah. Or coming from Magic, I'm listening. And, and I think he sees something that says to him, that they're probably not going to sign him back, especially at the numbers that uh, was reported, even though he said that that was never the case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to listen to it. It's Magic Johnson. Jay, when uh, you hear a said about a player that he doesn't bring the winning mentality and attitude we need, he's not talking about talent, is he? Well, it, when, when I hear that, I go back to a bigger body of work than just one playoff series. And I'm curious, you know, when Magic comes on our show, when we get a chance to talk to him eventually, what he's referring to. Because it can't just be about, hey, you being a no-show during the first round of the playoffs. I'm not sitting up here defending Dennis Schroeder at all. I mean, there was one game he had a donut. He didn't really step up to the level you expected a guy of his caliber to step up to. But one of the things I do know is that Dennis Schroeder was also coming off two weeks of having COVID. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I've seen the way COVID affected Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum was not himself for a long juncture of the season before he started to start rolling. So, you know, there's complexity to that as well. So I would think that Magic, it was just interesting hearing saying he's not a Laker fit. He failed the test, which is a one playoff series. But you're wondering, there has to be more there that would make Magic say that. Yeah. It just being That's one I mean. player. It, Winning awesome. mentality. Like yeah, when you got, say something like that. That means since you've been here, you haven't on, been on guys. the same page. Yeah, you got to look, at, you gotta a, look at, in deeper than just that playoff series. Agreed. For sure. As pros, if I said about either one of you, you know, I don't know if he's got that winning mentality. You're going to tell me that, you, I mean, you're going to take that personal. That's but it's weird that you would shot. say he failed the playoffs, but instead of saying, he didn't bring the winning mentality since the time he's been here. Yeah. Like, th that's that's where I get confused he's not a Laker. with the statement. Yeah, he's not he's a Laker. He's not a Laker. I mean, that's, again, I, I would feel a certain way if somebody said that about me, right? I mean, like, I'm oh, whatever team me pays me. <laughs>
uh, Drummond uh, g- getting a buyout, not playing for Cleveland for what, for a month or two months, and then coming to us. Uh, there was a lot of different factors in, in, in through injuries. I wouldn't say we navigated it well. I thought the chemistry was was good, not great in the sense of. Uh, it, it wasn't anyone, any particular player's fault. It was just a situation of COVID and what you could and couldn't do. And so, um, I can't wait to next season where guys can really be able, to, you know, buckle down and be able to hang out with each other, get stuff like that. And you know, last I remember, I remember before we won a championship, Braun had some of us go to Vegas and had our own little, our own little boot camp and tell us our roles. And we didn't, we didn't get, we didn't have all that, we didn't have all that time. But that's not the reason why we lost. That's definitely not. It was just the injury bug and not be able to come together and, and be right at the end. Chris McGee joining us now. Geeter, I want to start with you. Let's go back to the buyout market period uh, when the Lakers were pursuing the big fella, Andre Drummond. It was then said this Mm -hmm. week that they promised him he would start. And think about it. He's young, 27 years old. He comes in as a double-double machine. But when you look how it played out, looking back now, do you think it worked? I I think it's a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest Mm -hmm. with you. And I'm going to steal something you said at the end of the season. He never really got the chance to see what it would look like next to LeBron James and AD. LeBron James makes everybody's life easier. He really didn't have that opportunity too many times, Allie. But I do look at this. Here are some of the positives. I looked at the last five games of the regular season. Double-double in every game, scoring 15, scoring 20, average 13 and 12. I looked at a couple wins, Brez. Remember that Brooklyn game? 20-11, and Lakers got the win. That Jazz win on a weekend at Staples. Uh, He went for like 27-8. and So there were those moments. But the number that keeps jumping out at me, they were 12-13 and in the 25 games that he played, including the playoffs. So Rob Palenka, Frank Vogel, the Lakers, they need to look at where do we go from here with him? Is he part of the future? And by the way, if he is, Brez, he's going to have to... He's going to have to take a pay cut. Yeah, no doubt. He was slated to make $28 million had he completed the year in Cleveland. I mean, that, that's a lot of cash right there. Lakers do not have that money waiting to, to, to give it to a guy like Drummond. Here's what I say about him. I think if this team has a training camp with Andre Drummond and AD and LeBron, then maybe something special starts to percolate. That's three full weeks together, some preseason games, and that's the risk you take with a guy who joins you mid-season, or in his case, kind of late season. You never know how it's going to gel. And and to to what you just said, Geet, what did he and LeBron and AD play like a half dozen games together before the playoffs started? I mean, if if that even. So just not enough time to really, I'd probably give Drummond an incomplete grade for for what he did for this team. Just We just don't know. As we all know, we just listened to Jared Dudley as well. Chemistry matters, but chemistry also takes time. I loved his approach. I loved his attitude, his mentality, and you have to give that time. He worked really hard, and he cared. He did. He never complained. I I hope he gets credit for that. Right. I want to take it one step further, guys, and ask you moving forward, looking ahead, as you guys kind of just pitched this. When you're thinking of the Laker franchise player down low and Anthony Davis, what does the player next to him look like when it comes to complimenting the best? Well, I think it's there's two parts to it. And I think the Lakers hit an absolute home run the year they won the championship because they got JaVale McGee and a Dwight Howard who's at the stage of his career where he just wanted to please everyone, mm-hmm. play whatever role you give me, and just I'm never going to complain. Absolutely. Right. Got a three-time defensive player of the year, so they hit a home run with that. Yep. I, I, I think it's it's two types of players, and it depends on what style you want to play. I would go with a Marc Gasol type of guy for sure because I like that spread option. I like a guy that can get behind the three-point line and facilitate and open up that key for AD. But I also like the Dwight Howard JaVale type of guy as well that's going to get the rebounds, Brez. That's going to bang. He's going to defend. He's going to block shots. And when AD slides over the five, he's going to be like, go ahead. Yep, it's all you. You know, the thing about Montrez and Drummond, you know how many threes they made this year? None. Okay, so it's not really exactly stretching the court. And AD kind of got away from the three as well towards the end of, of this past season. So you have three big men who just aren't really carrying the threat of shooting a three-pointer. So I think a, a new age NBA center. Don't know who it would be. Gasol is kind of the prototype. He's just getting a little long in the tooth. So, you know, you need a guy who can really stretch that court to kind of let AD do whatever he wants. If he wants to go down to the post or if he wants to uh, kind of rediscover that three-point shooting game. Uh, but Montrez and, and Andre Drama just do not present that type of threat. I think we've all known that for a while. And it's, it's, it's pretty evident when you watch them play. I liked how he and his ex interview, there's a lot of assessing that he wants yeah. to do. He, he wants to reflect. He doesn't want to make any decisions right now. Obviously, you can't emotionally yeah. the day after when he spoke to us. Um, but I think that he understands that 
to steal a line from Dennis Schroeder. There's some unfinished business from his position alone. Yeah, there is for sure, Ali. And I think he still feels, you know, he's still a young guy, right, Brez? Was yeah. he 27, 27 years old? 28, All-Star game a couple yeah. times. He's still going to earn some real money yeah. in this league. But what do you want your role to be? What kind of team do you want to be on? You can go to a team and average 20 and 20, but are they winning ball games? So I think he's got to look at what he really wants as well, Ali. Bottom line, the front office has some decisions to yep. make. But selfishly, we need him to return because we never raged. We didn't <laughs> rage. That and, is a problem. And I feel like that's out there still. Me We're too. going to. We're going to chase it. Straight ahead on Access. Who's in? Who's out? Who's running it back? And who's bouncing for another team? We'll weigh in with our thoughts on all the offseason roster moves that could be ahead after the break. What? After a difficult postseason, <laughs> Kyle Kuzma discusses what he needs to add to his game as he prepares for next season. That's next on Access Sportsnet Lakers. You're I miss Elm. I do too. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> so the look at the Lakers under contract heading into next season. It's not a long list. Just LeBron James, Anthony Davis, KCP, Mark Gasol, and Kyle Kuzma. Guys who is set to make $13 million next season. And speaking of Kuz, during his exit interview, he spoke about adding another dimension to his game this offseason. The number one thing. Um, that can really help me is, you know, just adding a handle, um, a, a handle to my game because, you know, I think that, that definitely limits me a little bit, um, you know, because I've shown a great, great, um, you know, great strides this year from a defensive uh, standpoint, um, making the right play. My playmaking has, you know, been better this year. Um, you know, had, had a career year shooting the ball from three. And, um, you know, I think um, if I have a handle, um, it's just going to make everything come together. And uh, that's the number one thing that I'm, you know, really harping on this year, this summer. I got to work on uh, catch and shoot. Um, you know, uh, I mean, you get a lot of wide open shots with with, uh, with Braun and AD on the floor. I um, still want to improve that, you know, that I can shoot whatever, 40, 50 percent in the playoffs. I mean, just off the dribble, you know, um, stuff as well. Uh, me and Phil was talking about it already, so we're going to get to work and um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to always come, come back stronger. You know, just defensively, I just always want to, you know, continue to uh, try and just, you know, get a tenacious uh, approach to it, you know, just being able to, uh, you know, transform my body that I've, the way I've done and just try to, you know, get quicker and faster to be able to defend different guys and, uh, you know, offensively, I want to, uh, you know, get to my shot to the point where, you know, it's almost automatic. Guys, we listened to exit interviews last week, and on one hand, you had a lot of guys say, I want to run it back. I want to return. I want to be in a Laker uniform and have a shot at a title. And then on the other hand, we saw where they came up short and ways in which they could make changes. Ding, I want to start with you. If you could put your GM hat on, what side are you on? Run it back with the core, the guys that you have, or make some changes, reload? I think uh, you always want to make changes. Uh, you always want to think that you can find something better because you've seen the realities up close. Um, even when you win, even when you win a championship, you want to make changes because there are things you can you see that are weak and you can get stronger. And so a guy like Dennis Schroeder, you, you look at and say, like, okay, yeah, it's nice that you say now that you want to get better at catch and shoot, uh, it, but what was coming you knew you knew the makeup of the team so you weren't good enough at catch and shoot throughout the course of the season to shoot more than 31 percent from three so who are you like who who how much are you going to really change at this point whereas i can get a guy who i know will hit 40 percent, or i know a guy i know who has a greater hunger to win a championship because he has won a champion those types of questions are out there and i think to be honest you have to say I'm looking for those guys that are going to bring something more than I got from these guys this year. I think that's the only way you look at it as a GM every offseason is say, I want something better. I'm looking for something better. Good luck to the both of you for following that up because I think we need the ding bell there because he was ding. spot on. So, hi, Kevin. Kevin, I'm here. Gator is here. So he's so excited. See, but, hit that ding one more time. That's a great idea. There you go. You should host the And with show that said, do you want to go next or do you want Brez to? Go ahead, Brez. You know, it's a question I ask every day. Who are you? I, I appreciate Ding kind of <laughs> no, bringing yeah. that up. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty important right there. And, and I, I'm going to go with, uh. I'm going to with mostly run it back with a little bit of, not a reload, but kind of a re reconfiguring, you know, tweaking it a little bit. They need shooting, okay? They just do bottom 10 during the regular season and three-pointers made and three-point accuracy. Did not get much better in the playoffs. 
I, I just feel like they need some more dependability. Is that a word? I don't even know. I might have made something up. No, that's um, great. No, I, I, they did just need, need a little bit more consistency from the outside. It really was lacking in the playoffs and at certain points of the regular season, some long droughts during these playoff games. All you need is like a Joe Harris guy. I know he's, he's probably one of the best shooters in the NBA, but if you add someone like that to this team, that's, that's a pretty good uh, addition during the offseason. Well, if they're going to give me Joe Harris, then I'm sure. all in. Yeah, me too. Uh, by the way, I will not disagree. For, for future, if you're going to ask, is that a word, look over there to Dinger. Don't look. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. Over here. We like to stay. Don't put me in your <laughs> category. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah we're, we're staying are. in the same lane. That same way. Same way. Set. Look this, towards the award. <laughs> where do I look right now? Should I just kind of go back and forth? It's, with it's awkward, isn't it? Yeah, it is a little bit weird. Listen. Uh, you don't have all those trophies uh, like, like the Dinger does for nothing. He, he, he brings up a great point. So do you, Brez. Here's the thing. Even championship teams always want to improve. But I also side sometimes on the don't panic, right? Mm -hmm. Like this team was 21 and 6. So what they need to look at until all the injuries hit, what they need to look at is what pieces were fitting. Who can we keep and who can we lose and it's not going to hurt us but i'm always under the uh I i'm always under the guidelines like, like you guys of if you can improve your team you absolutely have to even after winning two three championships in a row when you look at the shaq and kobe teams there was always role players kind of coming in and out of those teams same thing with the pal lamar and kobe days as well what do you got and, and that's the guy to do it right there rob palenka he's yeah. not going to sit uh on his hands and say you know we, we were 21 and 6 at one point uh, he, didn't, he didn't sit around and do nothing after they won the championship. He made a very good trade, I thought, to pick up Schroeder, um, it, trading you know, Danny Green and, and a low first rounder away. I mean, he's not going to sit around. He, and, and you know what the truth is, guys? They weren't good enough. Right. When you lose in the first round, you're not running it back. Right. You're just not, right? But, but the good problem that the Lakers have, Ding, and I'll let you weigh in on this, as they look to what do they need or what is that challenge for Rob Linka, is that you have two pretty darn good players yeah. that you just have to figure out how to build around. But there's not a lot that you do have to change. Those are just pieces that you're looking at. What's the challenge? What's the need in your, your eyes? Well, so I'll, I'll ask you guys this then. You, it, obviously, that's, there's no question about LeBron and AD. Right. You build around them. So now you, you go next level and say, okay, well, at this stage of who they are and, and what we know about them and where they're going to be in the coming season and beyond, who do we want them to be exactly? So I think that's a pivotal question you ask, especially with AD. I mean, you, you expect LeBron to be basically that player, maybe a little less on defense, maybe a little less, you know, uh, dependability <laughs> as far as being, <laughs> being on the floor. Um, but who do you want AD to be to be the guy who's going to lead your franchise to another championship? Is he going to play mostly center then? Right? Is he going to be a, a more of a, a dominant presence? Because he has been for your team, even, even though it's worked both ways. This is probably the best player he's going to be is if you play him more at the five. So do you embrace that and then you build accordingly? Every decision comes, that Andre Drummond decision obviously becomes easier, Montrez Harrell decision. So all these decisions fall into place of you you commit to say, I want AD to be this and AD, are you okay with this? Is this what you want? Then let's, let's do it. This is going to be a, a dominant team <clears throat> led by this or this and LeBron doing this. So I think you got to answer those <laughs> questions with the two stars first. This, this, and this. It's not easy. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of this is. Um, yeah, I'm going to dovetail off of uh, what Deng said. The unfortunate thing for the Lakers is they don't have a ton of money to spend. You know, it looks like they're going to have just the mini mid level, uh, which will be about five and a half, six million uh, towards a player for next season in the first year of that contract. It's not like they're sitting around with 35 million of cap space. And it's not surprising. You have two very good players, two top mm. 10 players making a lot of money. It's, it's kind of like a lot of the constitution of LeBron's teams, you know, when he was in Cleveland and Miami. You have two or three really good players, and he just got to kind of fill in the blanks. Unfortunately for Rob, I feel like he did make the right moves. Like he had the Schroeder trade, he, he got Drummond for next to nothing, Ben McLemore showed us a little bit of what he can do. Uh, it, just, it just didn't happen. You cannot guard against injury, nothing you can do about it. Gate, what kind of player? Well, for me, it's a shot creator yeah. for yourself, like and for others, and, and I think that was the most glaring issue. Of course, shooting, we all put that at the top, yeah. but a guy that can create a shot, because I look at the playoffs, the teams that are the most successful, the ball in someone's hands that can create, make, or dish, and draw the defenders, you're seeing it with all the best teams, got to be able to handle the ball late in that shot clock, uh, that's what the Lakers need, and it's, it's not going to be easy. Like a C.J. McCollum type guy, 
Ooh. I think would be spicy. Can you he know. get the ding, ding, ding? <laughs> Guys, good conversation. I'm, I'm just saying, it's because it's the, yeah. the Damian Lillards and Steph Curry's and everyone throwing out yeah. these major names. It's not that. Right. It's not happening. But could you put a package together to get a CJ McCollum type Those guy? Moment. Yeah. I'd take that. Great conversation. Love it. We mentioned earlier in the show that LeBron James is set to change his number from 23 to number six. And there's a Laker 